Cues of the Buttes. Cues of the Buttes. Do, 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 do. Cues of the Buttes. <laughs> one day Fred's going to record me doing that and it will be our official intro. We don't have one yet, so we need one. This YouTube yeah. exclusive a little questions, question or cues. Or yeah, yeah exactly. trumpets. There we go. <laughs> that would be great. Fred, if you could like bring in a band behind you next time or like hire <laughs> yeah, a one trumpet for me. trumpet right over there. I will pull that's it out. Yeah. That's in the budget, right? Like we no. have that in the budget. Yeah. To... <laughs> probably get we need to get a, a mariachi band to sponsor us. <laughs> 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 What's going on though, guys? Uh, our YouTube exclusive Cues with the Buttes where we answer your pressing hockey questions, life questions, whatever it may be. Um, Fred, without further ado, let's dive into this week's chatter. What's our first question? My first question is really more of like a trivia for you guys. So put on your thinking cap uh, from Kurt K. I heard today it was 325 days since the last wild game at home. What's the longest time that there hasn't been an NHL game played in the state of hockey? Uh, I, I got this. Uh, he's got it. Was, it was that last uh, home game, mind you, for the Minnesota wild was a three to one win over Nashville uh, March 2nd. So we're back, getting back into it today. Friday, obviously, again, recording ahead of the San Jose home opener. Um, mm-hmm. 2,555 days, give or take. Um, and that <laughs> is obviously the time between the Minnesota North Stars when they left in 1993 to the Minnesota Wilds becoming the new NHL franchise team here in Minnesota in 2000 and 2001. So roughly 2,555 days is the longest time. Seven years, very, very long time, naturally. Um, yeah hopefully you never see anything over 10 days ever again. <laughs> 10 days. Yeah. I, <laughs> how many people just unsubscribed after we uh, made them remember that time period of no professional <laughs> men's hockey in the state of Minnesota. That's uh yeah. Tough yeah. stretch of time for a lot of people who were around for that. I wasn't born yet. Thankfully I, I, uh, Oh my God. <laughs> I, I wasn't around to experience that pain. Um, so yeah. Well, I, Fred, I was born in you? the middle of that. Yeah. What year were you born again? 95. So I was okay. born after the North Stars left, but before the Wild came in and too young to understand the pain that so it caused So you didn't know. No, you yeah. never knew prof- nope. no professional hockey. Interesting. Yeah, Fred, you're my, right, 86? Well, I'm from St. Louis, so I've always known that there was professional hockey because the Blues have never left. So just saying. Do you hit that mute button down there? If you no, just I don't. Hit that, you do. Just hit you that. Do. <laughs> we, have a, we have an opening for a producer if anybody's looking for a job. <laughs> if, I don't, like fifth, if I don't, if I don't like time. get you guys to say that, I'm not doing my job. And it's got to be at least that's once fair. a month, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Well, Fred's, right, Fred's monthly stir the pot moment. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> next question from Tom H. There has been a lot of discussion about a culture change inside the organization. Do you think there's any substance to it or does it just make for good fodder amongst the fan base? I got thoughts, but Alexis, you can, uh, all start right. First. Yeah. Um, yes and no. I think that there is changes and I do think this team is a lot younger um, than they were which I do think you often see those younger guys bring in that culture change because they're from a different era different time period there's different things going on in their you know late teens and early 20s than the than the older guys on the team so I do think when you talk about a culture change you often see that coming from the young guys up um, which the wild we're one of we're the oldest team in the league not too long ago and now they've got a lot younger guys Um, and I do think that the biggest statement in the whole culture change if you want to to make that argument that the Wild have done that is that they didn't go the easy route of giving the C to Zach Parisi or Ryan Suter. I think if they would have done that, I would have said, nope, I think they're just kind of stuck in whatever way they want to be stuck in, whether that's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but I think the fact that they branched out a bit, gave the C to Jared Spurgeon, I think that's making a statement that, hey, you know, not, again, we say this all the time, but not anything against Ryan Suter or Zach Parisi. <laughs> no. I just think they want a different, you know, vibe for that captaincy. Um, and, and to make a statement that, hey, Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter aren't the only two, you know, big names on this team. We have other people who can lead, other people who have perspective to bring to this team. So, I wouldn't say that it's the biggest culture change we've seen in a sports team in the history of the world, but I will say that they're in a different spot now than I think they were a year ago. What do you think, right. Jesse? Um, you know, I think a culture in a room and in an or- organization is a very important thing. I don't think it is just fodder or something for the mm-hmm. fan base to talk about. I mean, I think it definitely fuels and it's usually more of a negative thing, right? Yeah. Especially <laughs> as it's pertaining to the wild, right? You can talk about yeah. the culture. Um, but I do, I think it's incredibly important to the success of the team. It's incredibly important to be a team. You have to have a good culture. And you you look across the board in sports, the Timberwolves, for instance, obviously I've oh, struggled with the culture. I'm not a huge basketball person anymore, but I keep an eye on that. There's a lot yeah. of drama going on in there. <laughs> uh, you know, you don't have that with the Minnesota Wild by any yeah. means, but I think you're absolutely right. I think by 
naming a new captain and having mm-hmm. it kind of be not quite a fresh face because Jared Spurgeon's an integral part of this organization and has been for a while. But yeah, you didn't go with your Parisi or your suitor because mm-hmm. they lead in different ways. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, Jared Spurgeon leads in his own way. That's a little bit different from what Parisi and Suter had um, because there is, there needs to be a natural shift in order for things to change. It's just like the same reason trades are made and the same mm-hmm. reason people are moved or benched or what have you um, because you need to shake things up, especially if the formula that you've been having isn't yielding success, right? right? That goes for anything. If you're not winning with what you've got, then it's, you know, and the skill might be there. And Alexis had mentioned this in our Mm -hmm. episode this week, like it's, it's a talented team, but then you're not having much to show for it. So what else needs to change? Is it more off ice stuff? Mm -hmm. Is there different team things? Again, it's a tough year to have a strong culture change because you can't, interact and become a team in your regular ways. So, um, I think there is a change happening. Yeah. Top to bottom culture included. And, uh, hopefully there's a lot of new faces on the team too. Right. I mean, so they're trying to get used to each other. It's (laughs) Dean's first, uh, first stint at at a head coaching job. I mean, there's a lot of things that have gone on in this off season that have created this entirely new team, which in its own right is going to have a bit of a culture change just because there's a lot of new faces on the team. So I think that it's, it's still too early to tell. I think we got to give them some time to get used to each other. And like Jesse said, you know, they, they don't get to do the stuff you normally get to do as a team hanging out as you normally would and going to do team, team building and team bonding exercises. I mean, it's a very different experience this year. Um, so hopefully whatever changes they do make, it does lend its way to, um, to a stronger team on and off the ice, but, uh, might be too soon to tell just right now. Exactly. Next question from Rick P anything new on Rossi? No. I was going to say also no, unless Jesse knows something I don't. (laughs) Uh, um, I think Russo and Garen chatted about it on his podcast this week, not to plug other pods, but (laughs) I haven't listened to it. Um, But we did ask Dean Ebsen about it today during the morning skate, and he gave us absolutely nothing. His answer was (laughs) nope, no update. So no, we'll see. So that's a no. All right. Next question (laughs) from Anthony B. If I challenged Jesse and Alexis to a pickup game of outdoor hockey, who would accept first? I Probably saw me. someone, I was just going to say someone <laughs> commented, I've got my money on Jesse and I was going to respond same. <laughs> um, yeah. I, yeah. I don't challenge. I, I can't shy away from a challenge. There's a, it's a problem because I am horrific. Like Alexis is a far better skater than me. <laughs> so I would imagine she would have more success on the ice, but I would be, so you'd have to twist to, my arm a little harder to do it though. Yeah. Jesse would be like, I'll put my best foot forward and you don't have to ask me twice. And I'll Take be like my Instagram photos <laughs> on the side, please. Yeah. And then that's, that's good to give go. me some behind the scenes content. And yes, you've got yourself a deal. <laughs> so Anthony, if you want to play, let's go. Like if you provide the rink to, we'll meet you there. Yeah. We'll, uh, We'll I'll be Jesse's photographer. <laughs> exactly. Of me falling. Cause I am, I'm not good. I try. I'm sorry guys. I'm sorry. So. But she always tries her, her best and I we try appreciate hard. her. And that. I still hate losing. Like it's <laughs> something that I'd walk into knowing I'm going to lose and I hate that, but I'd still try like, <laughs> let's give it a whirl. So, well, that's going to do it for this week's questions. Again, thank you to everybody who participated. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive content like this. Um, other exclusive content covering trades and news mm-hmm. and all of that fun stuff. Not to mention our full episodes each and every Monday. Uh, be sure to give it a like, share, rate, all of that good stuff. And uh, check out this week's episode. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.